Hi, I'm Andrew Wirth and I'm the convener for the New Zealand Veterinary Association Hip and Elbow Dysplasia Schemes. I'm also a surgeon and I see the effects of canine hip dysplasia on a daily basis. Canine hip dysplasia is a potentially crippling disorder which is due to laxity in a young dog causing the onset or early onset of arthritis leading to pain and suffering. Sadly, hip dysplasia is all too common and it can be so crippling that some dogs will eventually require a hip replacement. So it's very important that we have strategies by which we can eliminate hip dysplasia from our dog population. This is generally in the form of scoring the dogs at a young age prior to selecting them for breeding. And we've traditionally used a system known as the British Veterinary Association Hip Dysplasia Scoring Scheme. So here we have a model of a dog's pelvis and an x-ray positioned in the traditional scoring system method that the NZBA has been using up till now. And if we compare it to the model, the dog is lying on its back and the hips are pulled out as far as they can go and as straight as they can go. And this leads to an effect where the hip joint has moved from a standing position into a very extended position and the hip is very much tightened and pushed into the joint. We can look at this more closely on the model in that dogs with a tendency to be lax the hip will sit in a wider position further out from the hip but if you pull their leg into the extended position the hip screw homes itself into place. So this is the same dog as that previous x-ray. The dog's now positioned for a pen hip radiograph with a distractor which are these faint lines between the legs and the operator is gently pulling the legs to the side and you're opening up a gap. You can now see compared to that previous x-ray there is actually a gap between the hip socket and the head of the femur and this gap is a measurement of laxity so the pen hip distraction index tells us how much the head has moved out of the socket. From 2014 the New Zealand Veterinary Association has recommended that breeders use the pen hip system for scoring dogs hips for hip dysplasia. So what does the pen hip system score? and how does its distraction index differ from the information made available by the previous scheme. Well the distraction index is a unitless measurement of how lax the hip is. We can demonstrate that on this diagram by showing a hip in its tightest position and then a hip which is loose. We can see that the femoral head has moved out of the cup or socket and this degree of laxity, or the amount to which the hip is loose, is a predetermining condition that leads to hip dysplasia. So by eliminating dogs with lax hips, we can move the breed forward towards tighter hips, and tighter hips cause less arthritic change, therefore we can reduce the amount of hip dysplasia in a breed. So this is an x-ray of a dog with the typical signs of arthritis of the hip, is new bone formation, but you can see the hip is poorly fitting. It is a loose hip. The femoral head has moved away from the socket. And that's where hip dysplasia starts. It's laxity or looseness of the hip leading to the arthritic change. Theoretically, a hip could have a distraction index of zero, but this would mean the hip was so tight it would simply wear out. So actually, a small amount of laxity is normal. So between 0 and 0 0.3 is considered the normal range for dog hip laxity. If a dog has a distraction index of greater than 0.3, it's considered susceptible to getting arthritis of the hip. But that's not to say that a distraction index of greater than 0.3 is the definition of hip dysplasia. Pen hip identifies dogs that have laxity and where they sit relative to the other dogs in the breed that have also been scored. But it doesn't give us a black and white cutoff, a yes and no, for dysplastic or not. 
So this x-ray shows a dog that's received a total hip replacement because it had intractable pain from its hip. And this is a major surgery, major expense to the owner and not without risk and complication. The information the PenHip system gives us is a guide to breeding selection. We want to select the dogs with the best hips, the tightest in the population. But we'll have a range of dogs to select from. So the concept is that we take the tightest 40 or 50 percent of dogs for breeding. We're not just looking for the top 5 or 10 percent, we're looking for dogs that are better than average. And this is information that we previously didn't have with the old schemes. So, does the pen hip system cost any more than traditional scoring? In most circumstances it will. The system involves taking three x-rays rather than one and it has cost the veterinarian to get trained. So there is actually a accreditation process a veterinarian has to go through in order to be able to take pen hip x-rays. The x-rays are sent to America and the fee for looking and scoring the distraction index is paid to pen hip through Antec imaging. What this means is that not all veterinarians in New Zealand will be capable of taking pen hip without some further training.